Hey guys, let's take a look at uh, lesson 10, division by zero, and uh, we're just going to do several types here. And just kind of, don't obsess over this too much, but just kind of be familiar with these terms. If you look at this and go, we have four, uh, a fraction, 4 minus 2 minus 2 over 13. Well, what's the, excuse me, what's the numerator turn out to be? Zero, right? Okay, so we got 0 divided by 13, and the answer to that is, how many, how many 13's going to 0? Well, 0 do right? Okay, let's say something like this. If you have 15 divided by 7 minus 3 minus 4, what's the denominator turn out to be? 0, right? So this is weird. 15 divided by 0, but how many zeros fit into 15? Well, we call that undefined, all right? And the last one is even weirder, if you want to call it that. What's your numerator? Zero, right? Okay. All right. And the denominator? Zero. Okay. Well, how many zeros fit into zero? That's exactly right. 47, as my old math teacher used to say. See? Zero divided by zero is 47. Perfectly. Okay? Because look, here we go. Uh, we got zero goes into zero 47 times. Then 47 times 0 is 0. And look, no remainder works perfectly. Okay? Obviously, you can do any number you want to with that thing. So we call this indeterminate. Indeterminate. All right? Let's look at a couple of uh, what they call exchange of factors and multiplication. That's a fancy way of saying rearranging numbers. Okay? And the point we're going to make is this. Well, first off, let's go left to right. And, and again, let's just, you know, let's just go left to right. So negative 5 times 2 is negative 10, all right? So negative 10 times negative 4 is positive 40, okay, good. 40 times negative 3 is, well, we know 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, so 40 times negative 3 is negative 120, right? Okay, so we have negative 5, 2, negative 4, negative 3 is negative 120, okay? All right, let's go left to right with this one. All right, go ahead, pause it for a second and uh, do the problem, left to right. Okay, I'm assuming you've paused it and done the problem. Negative 4 times negative 3, a negative times a negative is a positive. 12 times 2, we know, of course, that's going to be 24. 24 times negative 5, we can just hang on to the negative for a second and go, okay, 24 times 5 is 120, and go, a positive times a negative is a negative, and that is negative 120 as well. Now, that's the same answer we got in the previous problem. Now, look at the number. Do you see the negative 5 there? Do you see the negative 5 there at the end? Okay, there's a 2 there, there's a 2 there. There's a negative 4 there, there's a negative 4 at the front, there's a negative 3 at the end, and then there's a negative 3 second. Okay, the, the, the point is, it doesn't matter what order you multiply things in at all. So anytime you see a chance that you see a string of numbers, you know, multiplied all together, go pick out the ones that, that you know the answers to and kind of, you know, get those hooked up together and then you can do another multiplication set. You don't have to go left to right and make it difficult on yourself. Make it as easy as you possibly can. Okay, so I'm not going to bother to do this one because all it is is the same exact numbers just in different order. You're still going to get a negative 120 on that. Okay, all right, let's go to the second part of this uh, chapter which is called conversions of area. First off, we're going to do conversions of, you know, length. Okay, just we'll, we'll do one dimension. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. Use unit multipliers to convert 20 miles to feet. And if you recall, okay, the first thing you do is do what? No thinking required on these. You just write what you are given. What are you given? 20 miles, right? Don't even think about it, just write 20 miles. You can just put MI, okay? Second step is you multiply by something. What is guaranteed to be down here at this fraction right there? Miles, okay, all right? Converting it to feet. Okay, well, we're gonna, we're gonna go one mile, is equal to 5,280 feet. Our, the important thing to us is that, again, we have multiplied by one, that's one. 5,280 feet divided by one mile is one, okay? All we care about is the fact that we have changed the, uh, the, the, the term, the unit. We wanna go from miles to feet. We're multiplying by one, we could multiply by one for, to infinity and you'd still get the same number. It would just look different as far as the unit. And that's the whole point of this. These are, I'll tell you something, these are really cool. I mean, to be able to figure out without obsessing over a calculator, 
what something like that is is really it's really pretty cool anyhow so we got this that's how you do it I'm not gonna even bother to, to do the answer you know let's just do the answer real quick forget the zeros for a second what is 2 times 5 10 right okay what's 2 times 2 well 2 times 28 is what 56 right okay now we have two zeros there's a zero there's a zero one two we have feet right and yoink there we go okay so 105,000 feet that's and 20 miles okay all right now we're gonna do something a little different although the process is exactly the same now if somebody told you to build a, uh, a, a, a BLT could you take two pieces of bread and stick the bacon and lettuce and tomato inside there and build the sandwich and give it to the person? You could, right? Okay. Uh, if somebody said, yeah, I want a bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich, but I want one, I want a piece of bread like this, then bacon and lettuce and tomato here, then I want another piece of bread right here, and then I want more bacon, lettuce, and tomato right here, and then another piece of bread. Would, would you know how to do that? Look at me. You already know how to do the bottom, right? You already know how to do a single decker, right? You can do it with double decker. It's not that big of a deal, right? Just do it again. That's what we're going to do next. Okay, we're going to convert 100 square inches, not a length of 100 inches, 100 square inches to square centimeters. Now, you know what a square inch is, right? In other words, if, it's, if you're measuring on all sides was an inch like this, that's a square inch, the whole. So we're, we're converting now area, not a length. Okay, so as before, we did convert 20 miles to feet. That's just length. We're doing two dimensions now of area. So they'll use two unit multipliers to convert 100 square inches to square centimeters. Okay. Can you visualize a square inch? You know, something like that. Can you visualize a square centimeter, like a little sugar cube, kind of just like the flat, looking at it flat? That's all. So we're just going to do exactly the same setup, and you will do exactly the same thing. What's step one on these kind of problems? What's step one right here in this old one? You write what you're given. You're given 20 miles, okay? Step one is no different. You write what you are given. Okay, convert 100 square inches, stop. All you need to do is go 100 square inches. 100 square inches. Now, you know that little two, you've seen it before, right? This little two means, you know, an inch times an inch. In other words, it's two dimensions, this way and that way. In other words, before we had one dimension. Now we have one and two dimensions, and then we have area we're measuring, okay? All you need to do is exactly the same thing, 100 square inches. Since there is a two there, you are not going to just write one fraction like you did here. You're gonna write two fractions. So don't even think. All you, when you, as soon as you see 100 squared, you just go, okay, I'm just gonna do two, two fractions, all right? So obviously, what do, one, what do each one of these fractions have to be? Just an inch, right? An inch there times an inch. Because an inch times an inch is a square inch, right? And that's what we have right here. So these two fractions, undo that one. Okay, now we're trying to figure out square centimeters. Well, what's the relationship between inches and centimeters? How many centimeters are in an inch? 2.54, you should go ahead and memorize that. 2.54 centimeters is one inch, one inch, and so on. And now we're ready. We got it, right? There's our with a two, and there's our one, two at the bottom. So and the nice thing about these problems, by the way, is that your book doesn't require you to do all this long arithmetic by multiplying, uh, then multiplying again, <clears throat> forget that. Just write this, write 100, and then write 2.54, and then write it squared, okay? Now, the only thing, last thing you have, to, you have to remember here is you have a centimeter times a centimeter. In other words, here's a centimeter going this way, times a centimeter going that way, which gives you one square centimeter, and that's it. So a centimeter times a centimeter, all you need to do is write a centimeter with a little what? Two, right, here we go, and that's it. Okay, let's try another one. All right, use two unit multipliers to convert 30 square centimeters to square feet. So if you wanna, if I were you, this is what I would do on these kind of problems in my book. I would look at this sentence and go, and, and simplify it, and go, 30 square centimeters, square feet. Okay, I'm going to go like that. All right, 30 square centimeters of the two, two square feet. Okay, then FT squared. Boom, that's what I do. Okay, so you tell me what the first step is. No thinking, just 
Write something down just like a robot. What do you write down? What do you give it? 30 square centimeters, right? So we don't think. Just write 30 square centimeters. And if you want to write it over a 1, go right ahead and do it. All right? We know immediately what the next step has to be, right? No, nope, don't have to think about it. What has to be at the bottom of these two fractions now, since there's a 2 right there? There's a centimeter. There's a centimeter. There's 1, 2. There you go, it undoes it. Now we're going to go to feet. Centimeters to feet, no idea. I know what centimeters to inches is. So I know centimeters to inches, and then centimeters to inches. There we go. Now we cross out. Centimeters with a 2 goes 1, 2 times, and now we're done with that. Now we're, we have inches now, right? Don't want inches, you want feet. Square feet, matter of fact, okay? So we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to go doink, two little more fractions. What, you tell me, what goes on the bottom of both those fractions? Inches, right? Okay, because you have to get rid of this up here and this up here. So we need one there to get rid of the first one, one there to get rid of the second one. Okay, well, we got 12 inches. We know that goes into one foot, and then 12 inches goes into one foot, and then an inch crosses out that inch, and an inch crosses out that inch. Okay, now we have a foot times a foot. In other words, a foot here times a foot that way. Well, that gives us a square foot, right? And we've got it. So we got square feet as our, uh, as our answer. Now, again, very nicely, John Saxon does not make you write all this stuff and do this ridiculous arithmetic to get the answer. All you need to do is go numerators, multiply it all the way across. That's just going to be 30, right? 30 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 has 30. Okay, at the bottom, we can go 2.54 times 2.5. We'll just write it like this. 2.54 squared. And then 12 times 12, we can write 144, or we can just write 12 squared. The unit is a foot times a foot, a foot squared. That's what we stick at the very end. And there we go. Okay, you got it. All right. Okay, try the practice set. Then let's go ahead and do A through, um, let's go ahead and do A through D. And I'll knock, just go ahead and do those all at once, and I'll knock down all four of those really quickly. Then we'll take a little bit more time to do E and F. Okay, so go ahead and pause it and do A through D. Okay, let's go ahead and look at A, which is undefined. B, indeterminate. Or 47, if you want to put 47. Okay, C is 16, and D is 240. Okay, uh, go ahead and pause it and go and do E. And uh, we'll come together in one second. Okay, E, you then want you to do uh, 44 square miles to square feet. So again, don't even think about it. You can, if you, you can write this if you want. 44 square miles to square feet. If you want to simplify it for yourself, nice compact little problem. There we go. Okay, no thinking required. You just simply write down what you're given. Write it down without even thinking. Now, you just go, oh. Hardly any thinking required here either. We just do, oh, there's my first mile, there's my second mile. There we go, there's two of them, okay? Well, we want feet here, okay, we know. One mile is 5,280 feet. One mile is also 5,280 feet, okay? Now we have one mile, two miles, and then two miles gone there. Now we have our answer, good grief. If you really wanna do that, don't do it. All you need to do is write this. 44 times 5,280 squared, and then write feet squared, or square feet. In other words, that is a lot of uh, square feet, okay? Just imagine having 44 square miles. In other words, imagine walking four miles, like one way. I'm gonna walk four miles down this street. Now I'm gonna turn 90 degrees and walk 11 miles, right? Uh, 11 miles and four miles. And I get to keep all this ground how many square feet? That's how many square feet you got. That's a mega, mega bunch of square feet. Okay. All right. Go ahead and try F. Okay. Let's take a look at F. We're going to do 3,500 square centimeters to square meters. Hmm, interesting. So I would go like this. 3,500 square centimeters to square meters. Okay. I'd look, make a look at like that. Nice and simple and, you know, compact there. Okay, no thinking, just write what you're given. 3,500 square centimeters, all right? 
write it as a fraction. You know you're going to have to have two examples of centimeters like that. Okay, well, centimeters and meters, what's the relationship? One meter is equal to 100 centimeters, right? One meter is equal to 100 centimeters, right? We got two centimeters there, two there, and 3,500 is on top. And on bottom, we got 100 times 100. You can probably do that. One times one is one. And there's one, two, three, four zeros. So one, two, three, four zeros. You could go across. You could go across. And 35 over 100, you can knock that down to 7 over 20, or you could just say 0.35 square meters because look at your unit you have left a meter times a meter in other words a meter length times a meter width is a square meter so there you go good enough alrighty see you guys next time have a great day